What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, I just finished doing some stuff. I've been uh, my, my buddy Primetime Phil. Definitely check out his YouTube channel. He's definitely an up and coming YouTuber. Um, definitely has some great insight and great takes and things. He asked me to record a piece for him about. Um, Jake Ferguson and his effect on the Cowboys. Um, Primetime Phil, I love when he comes on the show. You know, Sundays we have our uh, Sunday afternoon uh, live stream that we've been doing to, as, after football season ended to kind of take up some of the Sunday time. And between Brian Green and um, um, him, um, definitely bringing a lot of great insight, as well as everybody that comes in. It's actually been kind of cool when you get about 10 or 15 of other diehard Dallas Cowboy fans and get their perception on what's going on. It's actually a great thing. And I've gotten to know Phil really good. And doing, talking about Jake Ferguson actually struck up a thought in my head, you know, about what's going on with the Cowboys and part of the problems we had last year. We look at, we get tunnel vision a lot of times and Instead of looking at the whole picture, we get laser focused on one thing. You know, people will say, you know, Zeke Elliott, he's done, you know, and, and that he just can't run the football the same without looking at all the mitigating circumstances around it. We'll look at it and say, well, Dak Prescott failed without looking again at the same scenario that, well, Zeke Elliott's not running as well, which if you don't have the running game, makes it that much harder for the passing game, okay? And so it's kind of like when you think about, um, I'm thinking about a Dr. Seuss book where they've got one fish, two fish, I think it is, and you see you got the little teeny fish that's getting eaten up by this fish, which is getting eaten up by this fish, and so on. Well, that's the same thing. You finally look at the end, you got one big fish, but you don't realize that there's all these other smaller fishes that are inside there together that made up this real big fish. And that is where you look at what happened with the Dallas Cowboys. I know this is kind of getting kind of crazy, but you have to understand, you know, the ankle bones connected to the shin bone, the shin bones connected to the knee bone and the knee bones. Okay, everything is connected so to speak. And one of the things that's been lost now, now here's the thing that's kind of crazy. You have the tale of, if you break the season down, if we break the season down into the first four games, Zeke Elliott is on fire. Zeke Elliott is, is literally averaging 5.3 yards a carry. Dak Prescott is in the MVP talk conversation. I know it's hard for you guys to believe, and you've probably forgotten that, but the offense was humming. It was humming to the point where we actually, and I remember doing this video, we had CeeDee Lamb on pace for 1,000 yards. We had Amari Cooper on pace for 1,000 yards. We had Dalton Schultz on pace for 1,000 yards. We had Tony Pollard and Zeke all on pace for 1,000 yards, something that if it had happened, there's never been five guys on one team with a thousand yards. And what would have been great about that if we had kept that, could have been able to keep that up is balance. There's not one piece that you could take out of the Dallas Cowboys and say, well, we stopped them. Because like a Hydra, you cut off one head, another one rises up to get you, eat you. And that's where the Cowboys were the first part of the season. After, of course, that fourth game, Zeke Elliott, boom, ends up having the PCL. You think about when we went to New England, Dak Prescott gets the calf injury. You know, around that time, you start getting Tyron Smith, who's injured, who's not the same player. But one of those other pieces that I forgot about completely, because after the Minnesota game, he was not in the lineup anymore until we played the Eagles when they were resting players the last game of the season and into the playoffs. And that is Blake Jarwin. I know most people are going to say, yeah, okay, get out of here with that bum. But see, here's the thing about Blake Jarwin. Blake Jarwin was a great blocker. 
We found out in 2019 um, how good he was because I believe that's the year that Dalton Schultz got injured, and he basically became our number one tight end target. Um, we didn't have anybody else. And the thing about him, the difference between Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz was Dalton Schultz could catch the football, but he could block really, really well. And having a tight end that can block is is huge. And once he got hurt, and then we started having other problems across the offensive line, we weren't as effective. And see, that's where going through and looking at how we use 12 personnel so effectively in the first half of the year, it kind of waned in the second half because – you know, you're now putting Jeremy Sprinkles. No, no disrespect meant to Jeremy Sprinkles, but the reality is Dalton Schultz is not a great blocker. Jeremy Sprinkles is okay, but Blake Jarwin was a great blocking tight end. And having him there enabled then, of course, Dalton Schultz to be the pass catching tight end. And ultimately, that hurt the running game with him going out. And see, here's the thing about 12 personnel. Let me explain it to you. 12 personnel is two tight ends. Typically, 12 personnel back in the day was a run formation. It's basically a jumbo package. You're trying to get as many guys that can block as possible so that way you have an advantage. Well, in today's NFL, because tight ends are now kind of like wide receivers, you're, they're kind of a hybrid now that they can block and they can catch. And with that, you actually have a dual threat. And I love 12 personnel, and I've been told that, you know, you're old and loving 12 personnel and things. It's just wrong because you want to have five wideouts. Okay, all right, I understand, you know, you young guys just want to just throw the football all around. But there's times where you want to slow down the pace of the game and be able to eat up clock, especially if you've got a lead. You want to just be able to run and pound the rock. And having two tight ends in there, along with your five offensive linemen, give you seven guys to block. So now, if there's eight men in the box, well, you got seven guys to block. That means the running back, you just got to beat one guy in there. But if you have a tight end who can be a security blanket, a tight end who can block and can catch the football, you can do a multitude of things. You can shift your tight end can now become a wideout. And we've seen Dalton Schultz becoming a wideout. You can take your running back and shift him out. Now you've got an empty backfield with four receivers and six guys to block. Or you can end up having your tight end become an H-back where he shifts back off the line. He's kind of like, it's like a hybrid between being a tight end and a fullback. He can help chip that defensive end, Okay. You know, if you got a blitzer coming, he can pick him up, or at least in a screenplay, he can go through, do the fake block, you know, oh, I just kind of fell off of you, turn around, that blitzer is right there beating down on the quarterback, the quarterback just drops it off right over his head. Now you've got an empty space that the tight end, he's not going to, you know, beat a whole lot of people, but you've got a possession-type catch there, and that slows down the blitzers because now, you know, if, if I'm blitzing real hard, and I'm leaving a hole here. Now they're catching, you know, the ball out here. I got to turn around and, you know, and, and come back. These are things that we didn't have the second half of the season. Now, Kellen Moore gets killed because they're kind of like your offense got stale. Did it get stale or did he start running out of options? You know, you lose Dalton Schultz. Well, now you don't have your real good blocking tight end who can catch. You got um, Dalton Schultz. I'm sorry, Blake Jarwin, you don't have your tight end who can block and catch. You only have Dalton Schultz and Jeremy Sprinkles. It, the 12 personnel isn't quite as effective. And then as you start losing, you know, the speed outside with Tony Pollard because he's sitting because of the uh, plantar fasciitis. You know, Zeke Elliott can't pound the rock as much because of the PCL. You know, you lose Tyron Smith for some games where when he comes back, he's not the same. All of a sudden, your options of things that will work starts to dwindle. So maybe you start looking at this and saying, yeah, I want to run this, but I don't have the parts to be able to do it. And we have to look back at the Cowboys season and look at the number of injuries we had to key personnel. Tyron Smith being hurt, huge. Zeke Elliott, you know, with the PCL. Tony Pollard with the plantar fasciitis. Losing Dalton Schultz completely there um, after week seven until 
week 18 kills you. You had to shuffle the offensive line. You weren't as effective with it. Your skilled players, of course, also to Amari Cooper being out for a couple of games with COVID and then CeeDee Lamb missing with the, the um, concussion. Losing those skilled players as well as the big guys on the line all reduced things that Kellen Moore could do. So in some regards, maybe you have to give a little bit of a pass, not a huge one, but a little bit of a pass to Kellen Moore because of those mitigating circumstances. So let me say shout out to primetime Phil because he got my head thinking about some other things that happened. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about my thoughts on Jason Jake, Jake Ferguson, definitely check out Primetime Phil channel. Make sure you subscribe to it. And, um, yeah, you, you'll get my take on it, how I think he ultimately can make this offense that much better. All right, I'll see you guys later.